Hi guys, my name is Lindsay and I'm going to talk to you guys about a book called What My Mother Doesn't Know. It's by Sonia Sones and so I'm just going to jump right in talking about it. Um, this novel is about a girl named Sophie Stein. She's a freshman in high school and it is set in a suburban town just outside of Boston, Massachusetts. Um, it's all about, it's a coming of age story basically. It's about Sophie learning about um, just growing up and learning about boys and parents and dealing with friends and school and all of that kind of stuff that you start to deal with when you start high school. Um, and it's actually free framed by her romantic relationship. So there's three relationships that Sophie is in over the course of the novel that kind of frame the story. So the beginning is with this is when she's dumped by this guy named Lou who she was dating. And so right off the bat she's sad and vulnerable and dealing with all these feelings from break from being broken up with. But then soon enough she starts right back up and she's in a relationship or she starts to like this guy named Dylan, and she's in a relationship with him. And um, they're very infatuated with each other. It's very teen love-y. And then, but then she starts to, like, fall out of love with Dylan. So you kind of get the whole spectrum of that relationship of meeting someone and getting to know them and then dating them and then deciding that they're not the person for you anymore. So the whole scope of one relationship. And then another like little relationship that she has in here is with this guy named Chaz who she actually meets online. So um, it's an online relationship and she is she never sees him in person, and so um, she really thinks she likes him, but then she realizes eventually that she's not sure that she even knows who he is. After a very specific conversation, um, she decides to just cut off contact with him. So I'll let you see what that conversation actually was if you actually read the book, but um, it's um, a very good portrayal of what can happen if you get too invested into an online relationship with someone that you don't actually know in real life. So that's kind of a side note. Um, but she also, so at this point, after she breaks up with Dylan, she decides to um, have some time to herself and sort of like focus on herself and her own interests and what she likes instead of just on boys, which is good. So um, she's really into drawing and art, so she starts to draw a lot, and she um, has a sketch pad that she takes around with her, and she records things around her, and she really loves art class. So one day, she um, just takes a self-vacation to Boston over winter break to um, check out a, an art museum. And while she's there looking at her favorite painting, um, a guy sits down next to her, and it's one of the dorkiest, nerdiest guys in school. His name's Murphy, and he's very routinely made fun of, and he's kind of the social outcast, and no, really, no one really wants to hang out with him. And so um, at first she's a little skeptical of spending time with him because um, she's been taught by her peers and her friends especially that she should be hanging out with the cool people and not really bothering to talk to people on Murphy's level. And so um, she sees him there and they start talking and she finds herself trapped into spending time with him. But they actually develop a relationship and so that's where I'm going to stop telling you about the book because that's the end and I kind of want to leave that open for what if you guys end up reading it. So, but in the end it all boils down to like the choices you make and why you make them. Like are you making the choices for what you believe to be important and how you think or are you making choices based on what other people think or what you think other people think about you. Um, so there's this book hits a lot of different issues. It talks about um, parent and child drama, peer pressure, um, online safety, obviously, friendship, um, teenage lusts and just romantic ideals and stuff like that. Um, a lot of very teenage emotions. It's a very teenage book. Um, it asks the question of like, what is love? What is romance? Like feelings, just all the feels. 
basically. Um, and one of the most interesting parts about this book actually is um, its form. It's not typical prose narrative fiction. It's actually written in free verse poetry. And I know that some of you are probably thinking, ooh, it's all poetry. That sounds terrible. I don't want to read it anymore. But the poetry is actually really cool. And if you um, are new to poetry, this is the perfect book to get you into really enjoying poetry because it's not written in form. It's written in free verse, which is um, easy to understand it doesn't have a form it's not like a sonnet or anything and it also it doesn't even have to rhyme so it's basically like a narrative or prose but it's split into lines and stanzas like poetry is and it's legitimate poetry it's free verse so um if you thought poetry was boring and um, not fun, not easy to understand, it always has to rhyme, like this is a perfect thing to show you that you're wrong and it might even get you interested in poetry, either writing it or reading more of it, which is fun. Um, so I'll read you a little bit of one of the poems, this is when she first sees Murphy, so I'll read you this, it's called Watching Murphy During Art Class. He is so homely, so downright ugly, that none of the girls even think about him. He's too lowly, too pitiful to even bother making fun of. So something must be very wrong with me, because I want to kiss him. I want to kiss him real bad. Even though his nose is crooked and his ears are huge, even though his hair is a mess and his lips are tight and scared, I want to kiss away those circles under his eyes that make him look like he's never slept a second in his life. He just bubbled up, burst ablaze, and cremated me, and those arms of his seem like they're just aching to hold on to someone. I wish I could let them hold on to me. When no one was looking, I'd walk up to him and say, Hey Murph, would it be okay if I kissed you? And he'd look hurt because he'd think I was joking, and he'd turn away to hide his face. But I'd touch his shoulder and look at him with gentle, misty, movie eyes and say, Come on, I mean it. I really want to. And he'd look dumbstruck, and all the gray would fade out of his eyes, and the light would come into them, and his lips would look like they were getting ready to smile, and then before I had a chance to change my mind, I'd kiss him. And he'd wrap his, and he'd wrap his skinniness around me, and his arms would be shaking, and suddenly I'd feel all this love, all this need pouring into me. Whoa, I can't believe I'm having this fantasy about Murphy when I'm so totally in love with Dylan. So that's one of the poems, so you can see it's not super poetry poem. Um, it sounds just like normal fiction writing. So, And that's a really fun part when she first sees when um, Murphy's character is first introduced. So that's that. So I would definitely recommend this book for um, girl readers, um, probably grade seven and up. Um, it's enjoyable at any age. I enjoyed reading it, even now being a little bit older than this book is catering towards. Um, so yeah, I would definitely recommend it. And um, I'm just going to tell you guys a little bit more about the author, Sonia Sohn. She was born in Boston, and she started making animated films, actually. That's what she started out in. And she got her bachelor's degree in animated film and photography. And then she was immediately hired to teach at Harvard University, which is awesome, um, teach animated film. And then she moved out to Hollywood to be an assistant for a really um, prominent movie director. And she got fired, but then she stayed in Hollywood and ended up working on films like a Woody Allen movie. And she got married to the head writer of Saved by the Bell and was able to quit working, and she, that's when she started writing. So she did all these other things before she started writing, and she's still this good of a writer, so she's a pretty awesome lady. She has lots of books, like if you like this book or if you're interested in other books, um, including To Be Perfectly Honest, Stop Pretending, um, What My Girlfriend Doesn't Know, which is kind of like a parallel book to this one. I'm pretty sure it's by Murphy's perspective, which is interesting. And then another book that I read in high school called One of Those Hideous Books Where the Mother Dies. So if you like this book, make sure you check out her other books. And thanks for listening.